Hello, uh, my name is Gina Lurie, and this is my video tutorial on how to make papered back uh, pendants. So, uh, I'm going to go through a list of items that you'll need. And so, first off, you'll need a well ventilated room because things that we're going to be working with uh, can be quite overwhelming. Uh, you'll need a placemat such as the one right here that I'm using. You'll need a raised surface, which I don't think you can see in this, this see where it's pointed at right now, but I have a little cutting board. Um, you'll need scissors to cut out your picture. You'll need a uh, metal backed or uh, metal um, backings. I'll have video uh, a link for that, as well as glass cabochons. Uh, you'll need a um, you need Gorilla Glue Glue contact clear adhesive as well with Dimensional Magic um, clear uh, nail polish um, I would highly suggest to get uh, a circle stencil that you see back here as well as a soft cloth and some hand sanitizer and so th this is just an example of the pendants that I make um, so first off, what you want to do is, um, you want to make sure when you're kind of getting your stuff together, um, you can choose to use like a single use applicator, but I tend to use my fingers and use my hands a lot. So it's pretty simple. Um, you're going to get a glass cabbage on like this. Um, you're going to get print. Generally I have them facing down when I pick them up. And you get a tiny a little bit of uh, Mod Podge. It's called Mod Podge Dimensional, Ma Dimensional Magic. It is fantastic to use. And you use a tiny little pea-sized piece like that. And you spread it around evenly with your finger. And it'll look like that. You kind of see how it's distributed. You can use your finger to pick up the piece of paper. You're going to place it on, and you use your fingers to kind of pinch it off a little bit. So you'll feel it stick or not stick. If it doesn't, we don't feel it stick, then it's slightly floating um, on top of the glass. So what you're going to do is um, put another tiny, tiny little dot of Mod Podge, and you can use your finger to kind of spread it out. And you want to make sure it's nice and even. You want to make sure it's well coated. And you want to make sure it's all around. So you'll see how it is coated all around. So the paper is now is now coated. You should be able to turn it to the front. And you see how um, there's that little that, that little pocket right there. So what you can do is if you catch it fast enough, you just put a little bit more on your finger and you can sort of smash it down and work it out. Make sure that you have the right spot. And so, and so for after this part, what you want to do is that you're going to put it down and let it cure for a little bit. And so I have other examples of that I have already let cured. So, this is, uh, Another Anciora star that you can see. And so it has the dimensional magic on it. So the next part you want to do is um, I uh, use uh, some polish on the background. And what that does, it helps prevent moisture from coming in as uh, well as um, it helps uh, your, your main glue binder from not eating the Mod Podge and not... Uh, eating the paper, and that is uh, kind of a, a big deal because then you'll have destroyed art essentially. So, um, so once again, I just put on the put on the polish, and once again, we want to let it cure for the mental magic. You want it to cure for 
at least uh, 30 minutes. If it's hotter, you could probably go a little bit shorter than that, but you can always let it cure, cure for much longer. I didn't, I let it cure for about three hours. Um, I'll let the nail polish cure for, um, for about 30 minutes. And so, then we have, whoops, so now this is my example that I have that is already polished. So this polish on the back of it has the Dimensional Magic. So it's pretty, pretty much it's, it's kind of a crafting uh, lasagna in a way. So next thing you want to do is you want to get your Gorilla Glue. And once again, you just want to use like a small pea-sized bit of it. But you want to make sure uh, it'll go all the way up the edges. So for a long while, I was using uh, E6000. And this time around, I am using uh, the Gorilla Glue contact adhesive. It dries clear, it holds it faster. Um, the E6000 pretty much will make your cabochon float. And that can be oddly problematic. So you see how it kind of goes around. And so you just want to make sure it goes flat. You want to use this time now to make sure that it is lined up with the top of the bale. And you want to smash it down, and do you kind of see it go up the size when you're doing it? And there you go, you got your pendant. Um, so once again, you want to let it cure for another for another couple of for another couple of hours, and then um, after that, you are which you want to put it on the edge. You see how this is my flat surface, and it has a place on it. You can even use a tile, so, you know, since since the cabbage, uh, since the bale part of it is dripping dripping over essentially. You want something so it can lay flat and not uh, float or turn, because that's been a big issue of mine in the past with some of my pendants. You think they're they're straight, but they're not. So this is um, one that is all the way almost done, or it is completed. And from there, I just use uh, some hand sanitizer and um, cloth, and I just make it so it's nice and moist on the cloth. And then I just give it a good scrub all around and make sure helps me make sure I get all the extra dimensional magic and all the extra glue and all the extra stuff off of it. And I want to make sure that I get off all of the hand sanitizer. And too, just now, especially with COVID, it's actually probably, I don't know, maybe just a, might be a little hard if you guys can find hand sanitizer, but it works really well. So there you have a nice shiny pendant. So I've been making these for the last, uh, for about the last three years. And so um, I always include... Uh, with my pendants, a little list of warning size. And so on there, I always have these little papers to let people know that they are very flammable due to the fact that uh, they're put together of glue and polish and there's paper in them. And um, you want to keep them away from, from like a cup of water and things like that. So if you have a cup of water on your dresser when you put it, put your, your insignia down at, you want to make sure you you move it. Uh, also, I just want to make sure that since it's made with E6000 and made with other adhesives, you want to make sure that you don't let your kids uh, suck on suck on the pendants or suck on, on the necklaces. And so, yeah, pretty much that's it. Just make sure you keep them away from the fire. Make sure that you don't lick them or put them inside your mouth and keep them away from water. And they should last for a good while. Um, the first thing to kind of go on them in general is probably the, the plating. You see how it's nice and shiny? Well, after a long while, if you're a uh, Skadian and you love to wear your pendant, and um, after a year of hard use, generally the, the back of the place will start to degrade a little bit. You'll see the, the nickel that it is on top of. And that's it.